to humbly acknowledge before him that we are sinners, bathing in his mercy, preparing ourselves to truly celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Savior of the world. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. And on earth, peace to people, to people of good
May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. Glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you, your sons from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see, and your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The nations of wealth, wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace. 
brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it is now being revealed to the holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Explain that to you, God. <clears throat> rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened up their treasures and offered them gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I really believe that the Christmas Epiphany story confirms one very intense pattern of God. And what is that? He shows up in unexpected places. He really does. Even in a cave in Bethlehem. 
There was a there are many ways where God shows up. We just need to be open to them. There is in this particular story here I'm about to share with you. A pop, it's a popular story. It's, it's about an atheist who had a big poster in his living room that said, God is nowhere. One day while he was reading his newspaper in his living room, his little daughter, who was just beginning to learn the alphabet and how to spell certain words and starting in pre-K classes, looked at that big poster and all of a sudden she said, that, you know what the poster says, Daddy? It says, and, and what she did is she separated the word nowhere. Here's what she said. God is now here. <laughs> From nowhere to <clears throat> here. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> she was so proud that she had successfully, she believed, read the sentence for the first time in her life. Her father wanted to correct her, but all of a sudden he went silent himself. He had not seen that possibility. And the next time he walked by that big poster, he couldn't help reading it as God is now here. If we listen to the story of the Epiphany, we can't believe that that was the end of it for those three wise men, or even for the shepherds who came to visit or even these centuries later, where he still makes himself known. See, the thing about Epiphany is really who the shepherds and the wise men are really looking at as they gaze upon this child. And that's none other than God. Than God. They're gazing upon him. Of course, they they find all kinds of things about them that were told by Mary and Joseph. But are they really aware that this truly is God in the flesh? God is now here. One Christmas song reveals something so powerful about this epiphany story, the manifestation, the revelation of God. And it's a song... What child is this? I'm amazed at the hearing of this song, the way it's sung, its simplicity, but yet the, the intense power of the words. Because see, in the song it states, what child is this? Who is this child? And the words go on, this, this is Christ the King, the King of Kings, who salvation brings good news for the whole world. An amazing song. Are these words true today? Are they real today? It's not. Well, well of course it is, but what's the sad thing about it is that not everyone knows it. As a matter of fact, many people in the world do not know that God has truly visited and continues to visit his people. You see, for some, this baby means trouble. It does. It, we hear it in the gospel with King Herod, a very deranged man, a very murderous man. He didn't like to hear about this baby especially from the three wise men. It's interesting that for, for centuries, many people groan like Herod does when they hear a baby. Through all the parishes I've been to, when there's a baby present and it begins to cry and cry and cry, sometimes I, I hear that what is even louder than a child crying is the groaning of the people in the pews that can give them headaches. I, I even heard it on the plane. When you're confined in a plane with lots of people in there, 
and a baby begins to cry, especially when it's time to sleep. <laughs> I had a kid once who was behind me, not, not behind me, in front of me, and I, I think I'm the kid who kept him up most of the night, and I was so proud of myself. But anyways, the point <laughs> is, is that when Herod heard about the birth of this Jesus, he groaned. He really did. And one that is already this child that is drawing attention, not only to Israel, but to many other countries, because who shows up and who does Herod speak? The three wise men from different countries. What's amazing is that God is revealing himself even to the non-Jews. He's coming for them too. You go, Jesus. You keep on screaming. But yet, Herod continues to moan. And when Herod moans and groans, Jerusalem, according to the gospel, is all shaken up too. Because they know what that means when Herod, Herod gets shaken up. That nothing good is going to come from this. Herod did what Herod does. He asks, well, well, where is this newborn king supposed to be born if he's an infant? Now here, this is what is, is interesting. Here's King Herod. Really nothing to do with Rome, but yet Rome is saying it's okay for him to be the king. He's the king of the Jews. He doesn't even know his scripture. Well, where is this king of the Jews supposed to be born? Duh. Even the king, the present king, did not know. That's why you have to call them the scribes, the temple priests, and say, well, where is it found in Scripture about where he's supposed to be born? And of course, the Gospel of the day tells us, you, the least of all the towns of Judah, from you shall come the Savior, the King, who will rule. It's an amazing story. Do we get stuck like some people do? after Christmas? Do we, like, maybe already have your, your manger scene already wrapped up in the newspaper and already put away? People do that with their lives. Some people do. I'm glad that I see some faces going, no, it's still up there. Because <laughs> the truth is, my friends, that's why we come here. And even though many people are still afraid to come to church, Many of us have, are in the live stream mass right now taking part, still longing for Christ to continue to come to them. Every week we come to church, whether from our couches at home or from the pews in the church, and we are reminded to gaze not only in the manger, but especially what happens after the manger has been packed. Because you see the epiphany which means the manifestation, the revelation of God. God doesn't park it back in the closet. He continues to grow to in time when it's time to really reveal. That's why, my friends, we're here. The Word of God indeed answered the people's groaning. Because the reality of this story is that it wasn't the wise men seeking Jesus. The real story of Epiphany is Jesus seeking the wise men. It is Jesus himself seeking the shepherds. Jesus directing them, guiding them, pulling them in. It is Jesus who put that star up there before he decided to come on earth. He had it all planned, along with the Father. <clears throat> Do you think a bunch of white men were wise enough to realize that that star is telling them all this stuff? They don't know anything about the star. They think it's a newborn king being born. But they don't know the story. And they fall. But it is Jesus who put that star there. It is Jesus who had it lead them to Bethlehem. It is Jesus is the living God who had the prophet Micah put in his prophetic words hundreds of years before that you, Bethlehem, watch out. The king will be coming from you. 
You see, my friends, all the wisdom of these wise men wouldn't have gotten there without God leading them. What a message of an epiphany this is. But Jesus wanted them there to see him, to see their king and their God, to see their savior, even if he was only a pint-sized baby at the time. Don't let that appearance fool you. Really. It was the omnipotent, the omnipresent God in that pint-sized baby. The one come to take on sin, to take on death, to take on the devil. And when that's the fullness of the story, that's what we are called to say, Lord, reveal this truth that I may not be stuck with the moanings and groanings of Christmas when I'm packing everything up. What Jesus did, my friend, he still does today. Even in the darkness of this pandemic, his light still comes if we look for him and are open to him, to see him. And our story with Jesus continues beyond the region to the cross, to the grave. To life. Because this pint size Jesus took on our king size sins and allowed those sins to crush him instead of crushing us. Yes, he may have groaned a few times when he was whipped, scourged, crowned with thorns, when he was crucified there and hung on the cross. But he especially knows our moments. And he wants us to know his joy. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, my friends, to see the fullness of his epiphany, the fullness of his revelation, the fullness of his manifestation revealed in us. He is not done yet. Isn't that exciting? Yes, Father Bob, it is. Very <laughs> Together, my friends, we stand as we profess our belief in this very God of ours. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was the crown of the Virgin Mary, and he came in for our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Amen. We have heard God's precious words. We now take a moment to humbly invite him to listen now to our words of need and to respond to them. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he may have good health and wisdom of heart as he leads the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they respect religious freedom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose journey is difficult and whose spirits are weary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer persecution, 
that they be allowed to freely practice their faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from disabilities, that they find a home in our faith community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of hospitality towards people of every language, culture, creed, and way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the opportunity to and will to help the parish community in its various ministries during this new year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we take this moment of stillness to lift up to you our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord and yes, Heavenly Father, we believe that you will answer us. For we pray in the precious name of your Son, Jesus, the Lord. Amen. and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of this holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, our offerings, and honor the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that in you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Lord, the bread of life. 
and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of his peace.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. those of you who are home watching and praying with us, we invite you to make the spiritual communion at this time. Receive him anew in your heart as we pray with you. My Jesus, My Jesus. I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. In the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you. I love you above all things. Above all things. I and I desire to receive you. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Into my, my soul. Since I cannot. Since I cannot at this moment. At this moment. Receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually. Come at least spiritually. spiritually. Into my heart. Into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself. And unite myself. Wholly to you. Holy to you. Never permit me. Never permit me. To be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may never consist in our confession of you, may ever consist in our confession of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray to Saint Michael. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel. Defend us as God. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him when we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, hell Satan in the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 108, Angels from the Realms of Glory, from the 108. Angels, Lord.